that it is never late to be right. What? It's never late to be right. But it takes meekness to readily take correction, particularly when you have gone public. It takes, my God, it takes meekness to readily take correction, particularly when you have gone public. We had a celebrated testimony in the powerhouse. I felt God was sending me to America to get prepared for ministry because all of my mentors and my teachers were there. And then somebody showed up that God told them back many years ago that somebody was going to travel on a mission who was going to be there to sponsor it. Nobody would ask him. So won't that be a testimony? And then after everything was in place, I went to say thank you, Jesus. He said, no, you are. He said, what you are looking for is not from abroad, but from above. You are not going to America. So I told them in the powerhouse, God told me I'm not going to America. Then the ministry was commissioned because we are now going to, 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 to Joss. And the address of Joss was there. The, pray, the prayer was prayed for Joss. And then I went to thank God and God said, it wasn't me you had. Oh. You had yourself. When you have gone public to accept correction requires meekness. Sir. Those, were the, uh, those were public events. And I said, where do we go? He said, stay here. So everybody will know we didn't go to Joss. If I'd gone to Jaws, we will have finished there. Because God won't go. God won't go with me. If God is not for you, you are finished. You better take... What are, what, what, what are you protecting? What are you protecting? It's never late to be right. And God will test your meekness before he can treat you with greatness. You can't taste greatness until you pass the test of meekness. You have to pass it. You can't be wrong. That's why you're a disciple. He's the master. Not one of us is a master. He's the master. All these events came after I've been hearing from God directly. But you, there, there is the voice of the shepherd and the voice of the, of the stranger. The two of them are very much alike. They're not careful. They're very much close. It takes meekness to assess divine direction. It takes me to receive divine correction. If you are not there, you are not there. In the precious name of Jesus, no one will walk his way into a ditch. Yeah. You will not walk your way into a ditch. Yeah. You shall not walk your way into a ditch. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Can I have you say with me, it's never late to be right? He said, they make will he guide in judgment. The make will he teach his way. Psalm 25 and verse 9. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Verse 10. Him will he in the way that he shall go. It takes meekness to receive divine direction and embrace divine corrections as may come your way from time to time. But the cost of correction is cheaper than the cost of living in error. You can't be on the wrong road and arrive at your destination. Why don't you reverse and get back on the, on the right road? The shame of error is heavier than the shame of correction. You are corrected. Stupid man, he doesn't know where he's going. But you continue in error where well, we know it will fail before. So you better mind yourself and let each one go with their own comment. Some fellows are set for marriage and they knew at a point that this thing won't work. But they can't turn back anymore. They now enter into it for a lifetime of struggles. That won't be you. So it's wisdom, therefore, to commit our ways to the Lord and trust also in Him so He can direct our paths. Don't ever lean on your own understanding. 
No one can lead himself on this journey successfully. No one can lead himself on this journey successfully. Because Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Two, chapter 16, and verse 25, repeated verbatim, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And what can we do but do what seems right to us? We can't do anything other thing. We do what is right to us. Because they're limited. No one knows tomorrow like the one who created it. You won't miss your steps. <laughs> well, it's also important to know that no child of God will ever outgrow divine direction. No child of God will ever outgrow divine direction in life. No. He said, the Lord shall guide thee continually. We need his guidance continually, not once and for all, continually. We need his guidance continually. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11. It's one of the things we get from prayer and fasting. To be guided continually. And he's guiding us to our high places, verse 14. That's what he does. His guidance to terminate dry seasons. You are like a water garden. And like fountains of water, whose waters dry not. 